Happy New Year, friends. What's that? It's actually the second week of January. I don't care. Time is an illusion and January doubly so. I'm starting 2024 whenever I want. And that time is right now. As with every year, I'm kicking off with psychic predictions. For the past few years, I've been asking my scientist friends to open their third eye, align their chakras, and tell me what the universe has in store for us for the next 12 months. And so, as always, I will begin by judging the predictions of last year. First, I went to biologist and DNA specialist Dr. Karen James, who gazed into her crystal ball and reported that someone will resurrect either as cells, embryos, or actual young and extinct species. They'll try to justify it by suggesting it is ecologically relevant, but it will not truly be. First prediction, and it's a hit. Well, Sort of. Okay, Dr. James was likely referring to someone cloning a species back into existence, as some researchers are currently trying to do with the dodo. But last July, scientists published a paper in PLOS One announcing that they had revived a particular species of nematode that they found in Siberian permafrost. These little goofballs have been in suspended animation for about 46,000 years, and since they were successfully resurrected, they are now the only known survivors of an otherwise extinct species. So technically, Dr. James was correct, which as we all know, is the best sort of way to be correct. Good job. I mean, I don't know anything about its ecological relevancy claimed or otherwise, but you know what? We're starting off positive. That's a hit. Dr. James's next prediction was that Ancestry.com will merge with Twitter and charge $8 a month for Twitter Blue Gene, which will provide a scientifically bogus validation of one's race or genealogy of choice to win arguments against SJWs. This did not happen, uh, probably not for lack of trying on Elon Musk's part, but, you know, I think he just found it's cheaper to just ban the SJWs. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just going to do that. Next up was the bad astronomer himself, Dr. Phil Plate, who consulted his astrological charts to determine that the James Webb Space Telescope will see an unambiguous gay pride flag in a distant galaxy. NASA will still refuse to consider changing the observatory's name. That did not happen. Well, you know, the first part didn't happen. The second part did, I guess, and that NASA has continued to insist that we call it the James Webb Space Telescope, despite the the fact that James Webb was a real asswipe who discriminated against LGBTQ people. Fun fact, though, if you Google James Webb LGBTQ, Google's shitty AI thinks that you want to know when James Webb came out, which James Webb would have fucking hated. So that's fun. Next, Dr. Plate predicted that Elon Musk will buy the ACLU and shut it down. No, but that's pretty close when you consider that Musk did get the Anti-Defamation League to go completely off the rails. If you missed it, Twitter is now full of Nazis. The ADL gently pointed that out. Musk threatened to sue them. And then after October 7th, when Musk made it very clear that he's anti-Palestinian, pro-Zionist, pro-apartheid, the ADL CEO started singing his praises, leading ADL employees to start looking for new jobs. So pretty close, Phil. Next up, he said, Lauren Bobert will be arrested on felony assault charges. And my God, what a close prediction this was. First of all, Lauren Bobert was caught committing lewd acts in public, the audience of the Beetlejuice musical. Second of all, this, the very week that I'm recording this, Colorado police have reported that Bobert is officially under investigation for an apparent altercation at her restaurant involving her ex-husband. They didn't offer any other details, but Bobert said in response, and I am not making this up, I didn't punch Jason in the face and no one was arrested. Gosh, my I didn't punch my husband in the face t-shirt has people asking a lot of questions already answered by my shirt. Dr. Plate then rolled the dice with this one. Astronomers will discover 422 new exoplanets. That 
was a surprisingly difficult number to nail down, but it looks like at the start of 2023, NASA accepted that there were 5,284 known exoplanets, and at the end of 2023, there were 5,566. That's 282 new exoplanets, meaning that by Price is Right rules, Dr. Play has lost and should have simply bid one new exoplanet. Dr. Play also predicted that globally, 2023 will be the fourth warmest year on record, just edging out 2022. When he first submitted that, I thought, gosh, that's depressing. And I didn't realize that he would be wrong in the opposite direction. In fact, last year was officially the hottest year on record. This is fine. Everything's fine. Finally, Dr. Play predicted that my book, Under Alien Skies, will become a national bestseller and a TV series will be optioned based on it. Sadly, I will be replaced as its host by an AI that will generate images of an astronomer waving their hands a lot and saying things like, while the view from here is amazing, of course you'd be dead in seconds. This is actually all true. That happened. Did you, did you miss it? I think it was on like Apple TV or something. It happened. Finally, I had asked my friend, entomologist Dr. Gwen Pearson, to consult the ancient ineffable bug god and tell us what 2023 had in store. Number one, the National Butterfly Center will be attacked again and close again for an extended period in 2023. If you'll recall, QAnon psychos tried to shut down the National Butterfly Center in 2022 because they assumed it was a hub of human trafficking. I mean, why not? If a if a pizza place can be one, why not a butterfly garden? I'm happy to report that they were not, as far as I can tell, attacked or shut down in 2023. I'm even happier to say that they were cool as shit in 2023, escorting Texas Department of Public Safety troopers off of their property and tweeting that the cops thought that they could ignore the law because they were helping the local border patrol find undocumented immigrants in a butterfly garden. Apparently, this isn't the first time the Border Patrol has swarmed the center's grounds because the executive director told Rolling Stone, it's always bullshit. Those guys su support the Butterfly Center. All cops are bastards. All butterflies are cool. There. Number two, PETA will take up the defense of spotted lanternflies, hindering USDA and state agencies' ability to control the pest. Alicia Silverstone tries to pose nude with 10,000 lanternflies, but eventually walks off the set covered in honeydew. As sexy as that would be, I'm sorry to say, PETA has not, as far as I'm aware, made any new comment about the invasive lanternfly besides their milk toast statement they gave to the New York Times in 2022. I think they know a losing proposition when they see one. Number three, for a second year, no North Northern giant hornets, aka murder hornets, will be found in the Pacific Northwest. That's a hit. The Pacific Northwest remained blessedly murder hornet free in 2023. Good job, guys. Number four, the National Park Service request for people to stop licking their toads, that actually happened, will be expanded to millipede licking. This did not happen as far as I could tell, so I'd like to encourage you all to get out there and just make this happen in the new year. Make them put out a warning. Head over to Sequoia National Park at night when you can find glow-in-the-dark millipedes that smell and probably tastes like delicious almonds. <laughs> you know, because of the cyanide in them. <laughs> Yum. Thanks again to all my pals for their insightful predictions. For this year, we have a few new voices. Dr. James was traveling this holiday season and could not access her crystal ball. And Dr. Pearson... Okay, honestly, when I asked Dr. Pearson what she thought would happen in 2024, she just responded, fuck, <laughs> which fair, we'll put that down as her prediction. Luckily, I did get some help. So first, Dr. Plate is back. He went right to work, right back to those astrological charts. Here are his predictions for 2024. Number one, developers will create an app that allows you to reach through the internet and choke someone to death. They reach $1 billion in sales overnight. Beautiful dream. I love to just start off with an optimistic one. Thank you, Phil. Number two, Artemis 2 will be delayed until 2025 due to SLS rocket issues. Artemis 3, the first moon landing of the new era, will be delayed until no earlier than February 2027 due to issues with the SpaceX timeline and getting Starship ready. You might think of this one as being a little overly technical and not that interesting, but I love this because otherwise I would not have these things on my radar. So thank you for these, Phil. Number three, execs at Substack will realize their name is too difficult to say and write, so they will shorten it to SS. 
It's, okay, good one. Number four, Trump will get the GOP presidential nod despite his legal team only being able to get him on three state ballots. His vice presidential pick will be the Hamburglar. Now, I will call this one a win if Trump's VP pick has ever stolen a hamburger, worn a black and white striped shirt, am I the VP pick? Or is caught on tape saying rubble, rubble. Any of those gets fill a point. Our next scientific psychic is none other than Dr. Kave Hoda, gastroenterologist and host of the podcast House of Pod, where I actually recently appeared to help question Dr. Jen Gunter about her newest book, Blood. Uh, check it out. The link, as always, is in the transcript, which I link, as always, in the doobly-doo below. Dr. Hoda opened the entrails of a patient who came to him complaining of being a bit gassy, and here is what he saw for the coming year. Number one, within the class of medications known as biologics used as treatments for diseases like ulcerative colitis and Crohn's will have the development of great new oral treatments, infusions and injections will no longer be necessary, but the cost will be prohibitive for most. That's pretty exciting. I actually have a lot of friends with Crohn's and uh, similar disorders, so... Uh, that would be exciting if that's even close to a possibility. Number two, given the worsening humanitarian crisis in Gaza, with more and more people being crammed into small spaces with no infrastructure there to support them, we will see the development of terrible new infectious disease strains that spread globally. The cost will be prohibitive. Man, Dr. Hood is really coming out of the gate swinging with, with some dark stuff. But, you know... He's got a chance at a hit there. For our final psychic, I reached out to my friend, microbiologist and infectious disease expert, Dr. Susie Wiles, who recently had an entire documentary made about her efforts to fight COVID-19 in New Zealand. Susie put some tea leaves under a microscope and here's what she saw for 2024. Number one, Killian Murphy will win an Oscar for his performance in Oppenheimer, but won't be able to pick up his award in person due to having developed long COVID after catching COVID at a previous award ceremony. No, not, not my boy. <laughs> Not my I am become death. Number two, a nasal pan coronavirus vaccine that prevents transmission of all current and future COVID variants with the real potential to bring the pandemic under control will pass phase three trials and be rolled out equitably around the world. Still, most people in high income countries won't get it because it's obviously just a Gates funded ploy to depopulate the civilized world. Real roller coaster of things I want and things I don't want there. Looking forward to seeing what happens. Number three, deadly outbreaks of a usually innocuous virus slash bacterium slash fungi will sweep the world and be blamed on lockdowns. Why, what What has not been blamed on lockdowns? This, this one has a real possibility. Number four, Gwyneth Paltrow will rebrand her Jade Yoni egg as a treatment for long COVID. It's actually not allowed to predict things that have already happened, but I looked into it and apparently this one hasn't yet, so... All right, good predictions. <laughs> uh, so good luck to all three of our psychic scientists. I'm excited to see how they do. And therefore, I'm excited to focus on science news as it comes out, instead of focusing on all of the upcoming political news that would have me joining Dr. Pearson in an unending cry of fuck. <laughs> Here's to good science in 2024. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks.